Hey folks, my name is Jürgen, aka Nerd and Proud of It, and Destiny has brought you to my channel today to check out the results of the Christmas battle. For those who don't know, and for those who have been living under a rock, and for those who haven't watched the channel at all in the last two months, every year my brother and I battle for this wonderful trophy, and yes, this time I actually have taped something over my last name so i can show you the trophy in all its glory i won 2021 and 2022 flesh and blood and magic and 2023 as you can see i'm spoiling this a bit but i won as well and that means this trophy now is forever mine as my brother can only add his name next year to to leave a little sting in the perfect victory and he already announced he will try to do so he has to organize the next christmas battle and we're having a quick look at my deck his deck was actually pretty good i will show you i recorded the the battle and i will uh, show that after the little intro here for anyone who's interested i will at least show two matches and we played three and i won all of three all three of them but not by a big margin so it was pretty tight actually i played um, green uh, white and uh, red and i did have uh, a few boosters available of dominaria remastered a few boosters of phyrexia or will be one and the 30th anniversary countdown kit and as you see, I used quite some cards of the countdown kit, as did my brother. And I did have a couple of chain lightnings. That was uh, very nice. I didn't even play them that much, but the, when I played them, they were pretty useful. Um, good fun. Awesome fun. I really enjoyed it. And I am happy we could do so during Christmas this year. Last year I was hit by Corona and I had to play against him like in April. <laughs> um, few cards missing. Yes, there are actually a few cards more in this deck. The the Awakener um, was very strong. Uh, I also played a Sheevan, as you saw from the 30th countdown kit, as did my brother. He played the Sheevan as well. Uh, and we both got them on the field. And uh, even in one match, as you will see, two Sheevans are facing off against each other. Um, I will talk you through through the matches a bit, uh, so this won't get too boring. Um, but you see what's happening uh, up at the top of the screen. You see the trophy, the two name tags, and we always uh, make two and add the winner of course to the to the trophy which is very nice i won the first die roll and i started and i actually had a pretty good hand as you can see starting with a savannah line i had one in my deck and that one was hitting him quite a lot so uh yeah he um savannah line uh, is a good card still i think 2-1 in the first round especially in a sealed deck if your mana curve is not perfect and you don't have a lot of good one drops then a card like the lion can take on a lot even the one two creatures of the opponent like you see here even can uh, take on that guy uh, i have to read i always read the cards if i if i don't know them and i try to see what the opponent has what the opponent does and then, uh, yeah, as you can see, the lion keeps on attacking. This guy as well, I have to look up what he's called. Just flipping through my deck. Well, this guy was pretty good uh, that I have on the field next to the savannah lion. How is he called? I think he's called Elite Spellbinder. And uh, he is saying he has flying, 3-1 flying for 3 mana, two, 1 white, 2 colorless. When a lead spellbinder enters the battlefield, look at target opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it, which I did. So I exiled the only black flyer he had. And I put him under here, but actually it's in exile and uh, he was able to play it. That's that's the big guy, the 6-6 six, six flyer with four oil counters on it. And when you have no oil counters on it, you lose the match. And this uh, made him cost six now. So that uh, was very important 
because I saw he doesn't have any uh, other mana and he had a lot of white cards on his hand and he only had the black and red mana. So I used the Spellbinder to my advantage and as you see I have some pretty strong cards on my hand. Um, my brother is a good player as well. Uh, as well, that means I am a good player, not not to brag. <laughs> no, I am definitely not. I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I, I definitely felt I hadn't played in a while and I wasn't very concentrated because of some personal circumstances. But still, we had a nice battle. We had a couple of hours to actually play. We played a lot of board games with the kids and we had good fun doing so. And in general, we played Magic and we even played Lokana a bit. So that was very nice too. I'm not a big Lokana guy, but my brother is because his girlfriend is actually very much into Disney and he is able to play it with her. And that helps a lot, of course, if you have somebody to play on a regular basis. So I can understand that uh, Lokana is a thing in their household at the moment. Um, I, I kind of liked it as well. It's it's very simple, but I like the cards. I like the flavor. Lokala is not too bad. The, never will beat Magic the Gathering for me, but uh, of course. And uh, I think uh, collectability is shit because Ravensburger is reprinting everything into the ground, as they said. At least they stated so. So all good, fair enough. They want to make the uh, game available. They want to have game pieces. But uh, yeah for me i i need a good combination of collectability and um availability folks um personally pretty positive about dominaria remastered i think uh, it holds up very well as a sealed uh yeah there's there's a chain lightning <laughs> getting rid of the little guy he was like eh, eh, what's that oh that's a little chain lightning oh uh yeah shit. Uh, don't have two red mana available otherwise you could mirror of course the damage no um dominaria 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 remastered is holding up pretty well as a sealed deck booster box I think the draft booster box is very nice for that. I think the combination of cards I didn't know and I knew, uh, like for example, I got a Sylvan Library in my box, I got the Savannah Lion, I have a Swords to Plowshares in my deck. Uh, I would have liked to get the Birds of Paradise just to get them uh, on the battlefield again. Last time I did so was like 30 years ago or whatever. <laughs> no, like 20 years ago, maybe. 30 years is a bit too uh, exaggerated. Um, but cards, I know cards are like Spirit Link. I was doubting if I should play that one. But as I only... I will link to the video in which I built the deck uh, based out of the card pool I had for um, this battle. Um, at the end of this video. I will mention it at the end of this video as well again. So I will link to the video at the end of this video. So you can check out my deck building process, how I built my mana curve, what cards I added, what cards I didn't add. And I didn't add the Spirit Link because the Spirit Link is a very, very good card, especially if you have like a 5-5 five, five flyer or whatever in your deck and that hits him for five or even more with the Sheevan that can be uh, pumped up. But uh, I thought, yeah, if he has something against enchantments, I don't have a lot of artifacts. I don't think I have a single artifact and I don't have a single enchantment in my deck. And if I just put the Sylvan Library and the Spirit Link in there, they will catch everything he has against enchantments or uh, something like that. Maybe disenchant uh, thing. Uh, and, and I chose to not add it. That means I only have creatures uh, and... I think I have 22 cards in my deck, of which 17 are creatures. So 17 creatures, 5 spells, uh, of which 3 already are the... 4 actually the blast spells, like 3 chain lightnings, 1 lightning helix, and I think a 3 plus 3 plus 1 instant that allows me to draw a card and play it until the end of next turn or something, which I hadn't seen before, which I liked. So Dominaria Remastered pretty interesting set for old school players because uh, oh yeah he's killing uh, the guy with the lightning helix now and getting three life um pretty pretty solid set i know it the problem is i paid 170 bucks for the box and i opened it and i lost a lot of money which is fine as i had a lot of fun playing with it and i will make 
like a, a tower out of it as well, uh, which I will play with my friends. If you don't know what a tower is, you have like one deck uh, consisting of nine boosters and uh, 80 lands. Yeah, 16 times five. Yes, that's 90 lands, right? No, five, five times six, 30, five times 10. Yeah, it's 80 lands. You shuffle everything together and everything, uh, you turn around seven cards openly, you draw one from the deck, everybody draws from the same deck and you draw, you uh, you draft one of those cards. Uh, the Awakener is coming onto the battlefield. I think he's even able to get rid of it, but uh, yeah, very, very strong card. I actually used the tokens in matches, in some matches where he was a little stronger to block a lot and still fly uh, above every the battlefield and deal damage so that was pretty good no um i liked dominaria remastered um we'll play the tower soon um problem is now it's available for like yeah i know the set is like deemed to be a shitty set because it's overprinted and it's been dumped and that's a shame because the cards in it are nostalgic the cards are good uh, the, the set is fun to play with the set is fun to draft so all in all it's not even a bad set but it has a very bad reputation for if i would have paid 130 which i think the cost is now like to, between 120 130 per box i think that would have been fine uh, but as i paid i think 100 i think i paid 160 not 170 it doesn't matter i paid the high price uh, just to get a box to 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 be able to play this christmas but well, I don't care, but still don't like to overpay for those 40 bucks that I paid um, extra. First of all, the box uh, doesn't contain any value. I think the Sylvan Library is the most expensive card I, 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 I pulled. And I think it's like 20 bucks, right? And um, second of all, yeah, no, nobody likes to overpay. And for those 40 bucks, I could have got a nice unlimited rare. Uh, and uh, that's always shitty. There comes the flyer. He actually plays it for six mana. But uh, yeah, he needs to block as he doesn't have a lot of life anymore. So I'm uh, visiting him with my Sheevan Dragon. <laughs> and he uh, can't afford to uh, lose any life anymore, which is, of course, uh, interesting. So yeah, uh, what am I playing here? Let me have a look. Oh, yes. Uh, that that thing was pretty good as well. Nice legendary creature from the 30th anniversary countdown kit. Thalia Heretic Cat Hat. I think she's called. 3-2 First Strike, which already is good for one white and two colorless. And creatures and non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. That means everything he plays comes into the battlefield tapped. I think we're doing that wrong here as he is... Um, oh yeah, the, the mocks mocks uh, from the 30th anniversary countdown kit he don't, didn't want to discard a card uh, so he didn't play it <laughs> he rather played the land uh, or he didn't play anything at all here but i think he plays something that and he doesn't uh, he doesn't put it into play tap but we find it out afterwards and then uh, yeah he flies over with the flyer and i just take the damage which is fine because yeah i'm ahead that's cool um that was a nice combination by him. He was actually uh, able to like face the guy out and face the guy in. That means he gets another counter or he gets the basic amount of counters. And um, the problem is it comes into play. So it should come into play tapped, which we discover in a second, which we didn't. And then I just kill him with the Sheevan. But I, he, he thought like, OK, that would that was a good combo. That's why he played the, the black card, even with uh, the possibility of losing because of oil counters. Same goes for his Sheevan. Does it comes into play tapped and then we're like, oh, yeah, then this one should come into play tapped as well means I can just finish him next round or could have finished him last round. Uh, yes, and then he's reading the card. So that was the first match which I won. And then we played, simply played best of three and then we played a couple of other matches and I even made a mistake with the Lotus Field. That's how the land is called. Uh, I think that uh, comes in, uh, you have to sacrifice two lands and then it comes into play tapped and you tap it for three um, mana of your choice 
uh, and I didn't put it into play tapped in one match so I might have lost that match uh, technically but uh, on the other hand I won all the others so yeah fair enough we we still make mistakes um, second match folks second match not too bad neither uh, I think uh, looking thinking about what happened of course we'll see it in a minute I think I yeah he started as he lost and that guy actually gave me some trouble that's a little haste guy I killed the first one but there's another one coming and I just am like oh shit I don't have a lot of stuff on my hand to to block this guy and let's see what he has that guy is pretty good as well 3-1 uh, for one white and one colorless and if it comes uh, if you um, tap one mana and remove it comes into play with a counter oil counter I think if you tap one mana and remove the oil counter it becomes indestructible until, until end of turn so I just attack him here and uh, see if he blocks if he would have blocked I would have made it indestructible but now I'm playing this guy this guy is pretty cool as well I think that's a 3-2 flyer um, now 2-2 two, two flyer let me have a look I'm browsing yeah uh, now 2-2 two, two, yes flensing raptor I think he's called flying toxic one when flensing raptor enters the battlefield uh, another target creature you control with toxic gains plus one plus one against flying until end of turn which I didn't have so yeah he killed a little guy oh the cascade elf from uh, yes that was pretty cool somehow I had a good mana curve here everything went pretty quickly the cascade elf uh, actually is that the cascade elf no that's the phoenix that's the phoenix that's the phoenix guys uh, yes uh, the cascade elf would have of course triggered cascade and this one didn't and that means it, it must be the phoenix and Arclight Phoenix, yes, that's it. Three, two, flying, and at the beginning of uh, combat on your turn, if you cast three or more instant or sorcery spells this turn, return Arclight Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. Probably with five instants and sorceries in my deck, the uh, chance I would have used this ability is not that high. But uh, yeah, I still think a three, two, flyer in a sealed deck format <laughs> is very good. And there is a possibility this is the spell I told you about the red spell um, which I'm playing here blazing crescendo target creature gets plus three plus one until end of turn it's from Phyrexia or will be one for one red and one colorless instant exile the top card of your library until end of next turn you may play this card and as you see I play it right away so that was uh, kind of nice you get an extra card and I always think card advantage wins games and in this case um, it gives me an extra creature and as you will see it is uh, at a certain point inevitable because uh, my my army is growing rapidly and it's inevitable that uh, he uh, will lose this match although he now plays a Sheevan which is pretty nice of course um, and I thought I would have been in trouble uh, for a second but um, I uh, yeah what, what did I do here um, let me see did I already play the lightning helix uh, yeah I, I think I just attack with everything I did I show it to the camera I think because normally I would just uh, wait for him to block with the Sheevan and then kill it with the lightning helix yeah he says he's gonna block it the Phoenix he's block, uh, blocking the other guy and um, then he yeah that card is in the graveyard I, I put it there why I don't know so he's blocking with this one and then yeah he's blocking these with these yes hey i'm rambling i'm rambling if you're still here after what is it 20 minutes and then i'm yeah and then i'm killing i'm killing the sheepen as well um if you're still here after 20 minutes um code word for leaving a comment is yoda then i know you actually watched <laughs> the battle <laughs> until the end 
Um, I simply am recovering better. That green card is pretty nice. N nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, the gamekeeper. If it dies, you um, reveal cards of your library. I I'm looking it up again, but I'm doing it from memory. Uh, you reveal. Oh, there it is. When gamekeeper dies, you may exile it. If you do reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal the creature card, put that card onto the battlefield and put all other cards revealed this way into your graveyard. So once it dies, I think I even re re reveal. <laughs> Jesus, I think I even reveal the um, the cascade elf, uh, the blood braid elf with haste and the cascade and then he with cascade reveals more so that's what i'm gonna do now i think and then uh yeah i those those top cards until i really yes the blood braid elf and the blood braid elf actually triggers cascade <laughs> and then uh i do this one as well and i need to of course pay the mana cost but uh, i can pay all of them and uh yeah I can play it until uh, no cascade means comes onto the battlefield. Yes, yeah, yeah, I think so, right? Yeah, and there he knows. Okay, he draws the flyer, but he doesn't have black mana to play it. And then I got a little army on the field, and then uh, that was it for the second match. Like I said, uh, very easy going. If we make a mistake, we sometimes uh, just take it back or uh, yeah, accept uh, that the other one. Um, is 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 able to redo a step or move or whatever. It, it's I mean we're brothers. <laughs> Come on, I'm not gonna call judge on my bro. Folks, thanks a lot for watching this. I know um, these kind of videos may not appeal to everyone, and uh, yeah, if you use the code word, uh, then I know you watch still watched it. So thanks a lot for that. Please leave a comment if you like the battle. Um, Hit the like button if you did as well. That helps. Stay healthy. Stay frosty. I talk to you next time. And there will definitely be a Christmas battle in 2024 between me and my brother. And I'm looking forward to it. Bye, folks.